Hi everybody, welcome. It is Wednesday, July the 5th, and I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. I've got a lot of great things and fun things uh, planned for you today, and I hope that you are um, having a great day. You had a good uh, 4th of July holiday and um, are kind of recovering from that, um, hopefully. Um, and we are here in July doing a Christmas in July kind of theme throughout the month um, down in our retail shop. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of extend that to our uh, clubhouse meeting today. So what I want to know, if you put over there in the comments, is um, are you working on any Christmas projects? And, and really what I'd like to know is do you have quilted stockings? Have you made yourself quilted stockings or a quilted Christmas tree? Um, skirt or a holiday um, table runner like put over there in the comments what kind of quilty holiday decor have you made um, for me I have a table runner that I made and then um, I, what I want to do is I want to make a um, something for the Christmas tree a skirt for the Christmas tree I've yet to do that um, but that is definitely on my list and then I have some uh, like a mantle scarf uh, have you heard of a mantle scarf so it's kind of like a glorified table topper only it's narrow and so it hangs off the mantle and it has kind of some quilty decor on it. I love my little stocking holders that I have. Um, they have a little place for a photo. So they're little angels and they have a little place for the photo. So I have pictures of my triplets on each one of those little photos. And then um, it has a little sleigh and it has little Christmas trees on it. And so um, we have now five different stockings that hang from our mantle um, since I got married. And um, we have different uh, themes for each kiddo that are there um, on the mantle. So, but what kind of Christmas decor uh, or holiday decor that you have um, done over there in the comments? Um, don't you love that Christmas quilty look? I, I just, it just makes me feel good. So we're gonna do that for our Christmas in July. And um, be sure that you are on our newsletter because we are gonna have some fun things um, in our newsletter with Christmassy themes this month. So got some surprises for you. So make sure you're in the newsletter so that you are in the know. You can sign up there. Um, uh, down at the bottom, you'll see in our description, uh, a place where you can go to make sure that you are signed up for our newsletter. We generally send that out two to three times a week and it's always got some quilty goodness in it. Uh, so be sure you're signed up. And I wanted to announce that of course every month we have a different quilt fairy um, visit us with a fairy thread pack and this month Christmas in July here is our limited edition thread pack and this is the juniper fairy and isn't she pretty so the juniper fairy has a raspberry color now these are all glide thread 40 weight polyester um, they are tri-label polyester so they have a nice sheen to them so we have raspberry in the juniper fairy bundle we have stone which is a lovely neutral a really great interesting color too um, that stone and then we've got teal in our juniper um, fairy bundle and of course this fairy bundle will only be here for the month of July so we have it in both the mini cone and the large cone um, so grab your favorite size and it's a great way to build your thread stash because we do give you a little discount on the bundle so we have it in the large and the small um, pack and if you want a link for that it's down there in the description and it'll take you right to it um, so you can see the juniper fairy but it's only good for the month of july so grab it before she leaves right um, and then i wanted to tell you that in the month of august next month the month of august um, we will have an apqs road show here at quilt of joy in louisville kentucky so if you are in the market for a long arm quilting machine or you know someone who might be in the market for a long arm quilting machine um, definitely sign up and come we'll have all the machines loaded so you can play if you're not in Kentucky if you're not in Kentucky Indiana Ohio Tennessee if you're not close to us to come and visit um, you can always give us a call we can actually extend that roadshow deal to you um, over the phone so if you think you want more information or you might know someone who wants some information about a long arm machine just give us a ring at the roadshow we'll have some specials that we can't normally offer so just give us a call and we'll be happy to chat with you a little bit more about APQS long arm machines 
Now normally we have two of our clubhouse meetings a month. We have our first Wednesday of the month at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. That's what this is. That's our general meeting where we kind of focus a little bit more on the machine quilting process. And then we have one on the third Wednesday of the month, again at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific for our sit and sew where we really talk about um, piecing and um, showcase a piecing pattern and give you some tips and tricks on how to improve your piecing accuracy and have a little fun and maybe take some shortcuts along the way that'll speed you up as well. So I do want to say though, in July, um, we will not be having that um, piecing, that sit and sew meeting for July. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a holiday, a little bit of vacation. So um, we will not have that meeting in July, but we will pick it up again in August. And I hope that you watch the one in June. The one in June was super fun. We did, um, Oh, here, I have the block. Let me grab it, Rachel, and we'll put it on here. So here's the one. This is the block that we did um, in June, and this is um, from our Celestial Spin um, kit. So we walked you through how to make this block and gave you a lot of tips and tricks on it. So if you haven't watched that episode, do go watch it, because I'm going to extend this lesson a little bit today um, as far as the, the quilting of this block goes. Um, so then I wanted to let you know as well Oh, we were talking about that APQS Roadshow. Um, I, there's a new APQS machine, a new APQS long arm machine out there um, that was just announced at the Paducah Quilt Show this year. And it's Larry. And Larry is an 18 inch throat with a lifetime APQS lifetime warranty. And he is 8,900. He's a sweet little guy. If you were looking for something small and something easy and something um, that you know has a smaller throat space, a smaller footprint, Larry is your guy. And especially, 8,900 with a full APQS lifetime warranty is kind of a no-brainer. So just give us a ring if you've got any questions about Larry. Um, you will love Larry. And if you are looking for a beginner class, a beginning uh, long arm quilting class, we do have our, uh, we teach it, I teach it over Zoom. It's a virtual introduction to long arm quilting class. And that one is on Saturday, August the 19th. Now, if you have purchased an APQS machine, um, either from an APQS dealer or from APQS stores or, an a or from APQS directly within the last year, you get that class for free. Um, and so if you just call us, we can get you set up for that. Um, just let us, just send us an email or give us a ring. Um, you can take that class from anywhere. You could take it from your local APQS dealer or your local APQS store, but you can also take it from me. And like I said, I teach that over Zoom. So just let us know if you'd like to be added to that. We just have to get your credentials and everything approved. Now, if you would like to take the class and you don't have an APQS machine, you have a different brand, the class is perfect for you as well. We get into the weeds in that class. We talk about needle, thread, batting, tension, and all the things um, with a little bit of a focus just for APQS owners, but the rest of it applies to any brand. So I do have a lot of folks who take that class who have a different brand machine um, just because they want a good introduction to long arm quilting. So um, that is Saturday, August the 19th. Okay, and I told you that this month we are doing kind of that Christmas in July theme. So I'm going to show you, um, we are uh, all this year talking about some of the different three yard quilt books. And so this one is the three yard, the Make It Christmas with three yard quilts. And what's cool about this book is that it has um, all these different patterns in it. So take a look, this is one of the patterns in there. And this one, um, it looks like it's a finished size of 40 and a half by 55 and a half. And he uses three one yard cuts and you get that size quilt from the three one yard cuts. But what's really great about this book is that it also has all the information that you might need to expand it into different sizes. So if you wanted, for example, a twin size, you would get two yard cuts of three different fabrics. If you wanted a queen or king, you do four yard cuts of the three different fabrics. And it has all of the sizing in here for all of those, um, all the different size quilts. So here's um, all of the different, um, patterns, all the different quilts that are in the book. And again, it's got the three sizes for each of these um, uh, eight quilts in the book. So pretty cool. This one is the Make It Christmas with three yard um, quilts. And I wanted to show you, we've got 
a lot of different three yard bundles that we've curated in the shop and kind of pulled together. Isn't this one beautiful? This one reminds me of like that um, of 1950s kind of look. It's got the turquoise poinsettia. Um, isn't that beautiful fabric? That's a moda fabric. Um, and then this one is a dark teal that goes really nicely with it. And then this one here is also um, kind of a lighter teal. And so if you're looking for um, a, a three yard bundle to go with these three yard quilt books, we have a number of them in the shop um, that we've pulled together um, so that they are all kind of curated for you. I've got it mocked up here in Electric Quilt on my computer. So here's that one that I just showed you, Bobbles. And this is that lap size. So this is made out of one yard, three one yard cuts. And I just have, you know, some plain colors in here to show you kind of what it looks like. So that is the lap size. And then here's the twin size. So again, it is two yard cuts of three different fabrics will get you that. And then four yard cuts of three different fabrics will get you that king queen. Um, and it goes together. It's a snowball block with um, a little strip set and then a, a really interesting kind of elongated uh, four patch is that one. Um, they also have this one in the book and it is so much fun to make. It's just the little Christmas trees and then a nine patch. Isn't it cute? So th this is from three one yard cuts for the, the lap and then there's the twin. Again, that's two yard cuts of three different fabrics to get you the twin. And then the Queen King is four yard cuts of three different fabrics. Um, and it's just so festive and it goes together really fast and easy too. Um, here's another one in the book. And this one again uses a nice bold print. So if you have any beautiful Christmas fabrics that you've kind of been hanging on to and you're not sure like what to use them with, this one is a, a really easy um, pattern that goes together quite quickly. There's the twin and there's the Queen King. Um, here's another one that I love with, uh, it reminds me of um, the little peppermint uh, candies. And um, I could even see if you wanted to be ambitious, you could put little bows on those secondary blocks and make little presents. Um, but again, this is in that, this is with three one yard cuts. That's the lap. There's the twin and the king queen. And then here's another one from the book that's a Christmas star, goes together really simply and easily. Um, and it has a nice place if you've got some beautiful big focal prints um, there in those plain blocks. That's the lap, here's the twin, and there's the queen king. And then this one, um, I, this one was really super interesting to me. I just like this kind of offset star and it's all done with half square triangles and then just a plain block as a secondary. Again, it goes super fast, really fun to put together. Great place to show off some beautiful Christmas prints. Um, do you have any of those fabrics where it just hurts kind of to cut into them? You want to, you want to like save them for something special. This would be a great, um, a great way to show them off. And so here's that bundle that I showed you before the, um, the the, uh, it's Cheer and Merry Mint is the fabric line. It's from Moda. It was that three one-year bundle that I showed you before. And I've just got it laid out in that um, Christmas tree um, quilt. And so there's a Christmas tree block and then there's a nine patch um, with those three prints. And then I've also laid it in here just so you can see what it looks like in some of those other um, ones uh, that I showed you before. And there's that peppermint candy one. So just to give you a sense of what those might look like in the different layouts in the book. Um, all right, so let's take a look. I, so the one that I showed you that has the Christmas tree block, um, let's talk about how you would quilt that. So I recorded this earlier so that I could show you on the long arm machine. It's on my ABQS Millie. Let's take a look at how to quilt a Christmas tree block. I've got the block laid out here. You'll see that I've stitched the pieces in yellow. So it's a 12 inch block and it has that Christmas tree shape. And then I've gone through and I've just marked the um, middle of the block with a long registration line. And I'm gonna start actually from the bottom of my tree. So I'm gonna bring my uh, thread up and I'm using white to actually stitch with. So I use that yellow to kind of show you the piecing, but we're gonna quilt with the white so that you can be sure to see it while on camera. So I'm gonna start at the base of my tree and I'm gonna do a loop. I'm gonna do, it's actually a lowercase e. So I'm gonna swing way out fill that space and then come up to that center point. So I've drawn that registration line. Now I'm gonna do the next bow here. And the final one. And there I am at the top of the tree. Now I'm gonna come down, meeting the center, meeting the center. 
and there is my tree. Now I could go through and I could actually fill out the center and let's just take a look at um, how that would look. So uh, sometimes if you see like this side of my block, I didn't swing out quite as far as this one. And if the symmetry kind of makes you twitch, if you just add more lines, it's kind of hard to see that you weren't symmetrical. So I can come in and just echo that and echo that and echo that up to the top and then do another echo back down. And there we're at the end. Now I'm using that white thread. I'm gonna go ahead and just sneak through the ditch here. Typically your ditch would be done in the same color thread that you're using um, to do you know, the rest of it with. So we're just gonna sneak through here. So the back of the tree, behind the tree, I'm just gonna do some back and forth rounded ends. So these are spaghetti, uh, wiggly worm, refrigerator coil, like whatever makes sense to you. I'm just gonna make sure that when I leave, did you see that I wanted to make sure that that very last one I was leaving so I could exit out of this kind of half triangle space? So that's the only key is you kind of have to look ahead and make sure that you are going in the right direction once you kind of leave that section. So I'm gonna to wanna to go out and then sneak up to the next one. And really make sure that those ends are nice and rounded and fill up that space. And so this time I'm going to head back this way and I'm going to sneak over the top of my tree. And then I'm going to head in and I'm going to do this side of my tree and head all the way down. And that will be my Christmas tree block. So if you have a holiday quilt coming up, look for ways that you can kind of make it sparkle. Like, wouldn't this be pretty if it was um, a shiny glide thread? Like right now I'm using a white Primo Soft just so that you can see it well on camera. But wouldn't it be pretty to do um, a metallic-y gold looking glide thread, something with a sheen? And then back down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just take some tacking stitches and then I'm gonna break my thread and then I'm gonna take you on a little tour around the block once I cut that. I'm gonna cut where I started as well. So there's my Christmas tree block with that wiggly worm spaghetti stitch background filler. All right, if you do this on one of your quilts, I sure would love to see it. So post it over there in the clubhouse so we can see what you're working on. I want to thank our sponsor, ABQS. Um, ABQS machines are handmade there in Iowa, and they are loved the world over, and they come with a lifetime warranty. That includes the electronics of the machine as well. Um, thank you so much for all of your support, ABQS. We love you. If you have any questions about an ABQS longer machine, give us a call here at Quilted Joy. Um, we do sell ABQS longer machines. You could also call your local ABQS dealer, your local ABQS store, or go over to abqs.com. Um, we've got a lot of great resources for you. So if you are in the market for a long run machine, let's talk. Um, I am so excited to introduce you to my friend Jim. He casually showed me a picture of his um, sewing studio and it kind of blew my mind. I think it was just a picture of his, of his ceiling and you'll see why I thought it was so cool and I wanted you to see his sewing room as well. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining me. Where, what state are you in, Tim? I'm in Michigan, in the city of Midland. Awesome. And so you have your sewing studio in your home, or do you have like a outbuilding or a retail it facility? Is, it's actually my home. It's right above the garage, and uh, it's about 27 by 22 feet. So it's a nice size space. Wow, it really is a nice size space. That's awesome. All right, well, I can't wait to see it. So give me a little tour. I see the machine behind you. What machine do you have? So I have a Lucy Gen 4, picked it up about a year and a half ago, shortly after we moved into this house. So. And is it on a 10 foot frame, a 12 foot frame? It is on a 14 foot frame. Oh, it's a big honking machine. All it right. I, I make a lot of king size quilts, so. Fabulous. It and you have a, is it, and it's a computerized uh, APQS machine? 
Correct. Yes. Uh, it's uh, Intilla Culture. Yeah. Awesome. And so, okay, so we see over there on the left, you've got so many windows. Oh my goodness, for an above the garage space, you are just, that's fabulous. So this used to be an open deck. The previous owners are from the previous owners. So it went in, I don't know, about 10 or 15 years after the house was built. Nice. So you've got all of your, oh my goodness, and it just keeps on going. It does. So you've got all your thread there organized. And then is that a cutting table? Correct. Cutting table, design table. It's kind of a multi-use. And then uh, sewing, right? Or sewing, ironing right here on the front. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, and more windows. More windows. Oh, my goodness. Look at that space. Oh, fabulous. I love that quilt on the wall. You've, you've even got very tall ceilings in there, too. Correct. And yes. skylights. Skylights and several ceiling fans and a little bit of a little bit of a quilting would work on the ceiling. Oh, that's fantastic. Greg, oh, your, your ceiling fan has like a, almost like a barn quilt Correct. that you would see that it's coming out of. Well, I'm sure that didn't come with the house. I'm sure you added that. Correct. That was added after the fact. <laughs> and so you've got all of your thread there on the um, on that shelving unit beside you. Is that oh. everything, or do you keep more thread somewhere else? Um, there is some thread actually in a drawer that didn't quite fit the uh, the indentations I drilled for those shelves. Uh huh. Fabulous. And so, as far as you said, you use your table as a design table. Do you also have a design wall? So my design wall is kind of impromptu. It's the white curtain back there. Yeah. So it just pulls across. And is it just a... Go ahead. Sorry, is it just a piece of flannel? Or what, when you say a white curtain, what is that? Right, it's a white piece of flannel. So... Oh, my goodness. So it gives me a little bit of room. Wow. I've never seen that. So you just pull it out when you need it and then collapse yeah. it when you don't. Correct. Correct. Um, uh, did you come up with that? I've never seen that before. Yeah. So wall, sp- I mean, for the size of room that it is, wall space is kind of at a premium because of all the windows. So uh, I knew whatever I did for design wall, it would have to come from the ceiling. And I've tried drop down foam core on a hinge. I've tried all kinds of things. And that just wound up being the simplest solution. Well, that's amazing. I, yeah, I've never seen that before. Well, gosh. So so you have a spectacular place there to sew in. Is there anything that if you could tweak something and change something, is there anything you would change about your space? Oh, I wish time moves more slowly in this room. <laughs> <Just by sometime. laughs> but uh, no, I don't, nothing, nothing I would really change. I really love it the way it is. That's awesome. I love anytime I see a room with all that natural light, I just, oh, that would be so nice. I finally got my sewing room set up and I do have a window now, but goodness, you've got an abundance of windows. Good for you. Lots of light. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Jim, tell me three things that you're currently into right now that you would recommend to your bestie. They don't have to be quilt related, but what are three things you're into? Um, so right now I'm into making bags which is something new for me. Um, That's kind of fun to do. Um, Cooking, love cooking, Um, and trying something new. Yeah, you got to step out on that ledge now and again, don't you? Correct. What's the latest new thing you've tried? Um, Oh my goodness. What what is the most recent thing? Actually, the work on the ceiling. Uh, So the, the wood on the ceiling. Uh, wasn't that. sure what's going to work and really enjoyed or really loved the way it turned out. Yeah, I bet you had new respect for Michelangelo when you were done, right? Yes, <laughs> I do not like standing in the <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim, well, thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. And I love seeing your room. I will see you around in the clubhouse. All right. Thank you very much. All right. See ya. We have so many great new arrivals that I wanted to tell you about, and it's hard to pick my favorite, but I think I've, I found my favorite. And it's only because we've been waiting for ever, like a couple of years for this to come in, and it finally came in, you guys. 
Um, if you are looking to pick out colors of thread, it is super hard to do that using just your computer monitor because your computer's colors are attuned to its own idea of what a red is. It doesn't mean that it's the same red that my computer thinks is a red. So it can be really hard to just look at a computer and like pick out the colors of thread. So I always recommend when you go to shop for a thread that you use a color card. And so the new Glide color card just came out. We just got it in. And um, this has been a couple of years of wait time for us to get um, that, the, that it took them to make the color card. And the reason that I love the color card so much is that it has the actual thread on the color card. So I'm not looking at photos of a color. I'm looking at the actual thread. It makes it so much easier to pick out the color that's going to look good on my quilt. Um, so I highly recommend that you get one of these and there's a link down there in the description so that you can um, go straight to it. But again, we just got these in. And one of the cool things about it is that it, it has, um, see the little donuts that it has occasionally? So the little donuts, when you see that, that means that there is a matching pre-wound bobbin to that color. And of course, a pre-wound, um, while it could match directly that color, it, if you go up or down by a couple of, of tones, it'll still work as a pre-wound bobbin to this top thread. And you'll find over there on our website at Quilted Joy, we do list on each of the product pages for each of the top threads of a coordinating bobbin that we recommend that would go with that color but it's also here on the color card and then if you ever see the little asterisks you'll see little asterisks on some of the colors and the little asterisks mean that those colors glow under black light and so it has all of the different colors of glide thread the 40 weight polyester but it also has all of the 60 weight colors the glide 60 weight colors the metallic colors and then all of the um, variegated affinity colors are on here as well as the glow in the dark colors i don't know if you've played with any of the luminary the glide luminary glow in the dark colors so fun especially like on a baby quilt you could write little messages that glow in the dark um, and then there's the pre-wound magnet glide classics um, that are also listed so this whole this is version five and this just came out you guys um, we've been waiting so long so pick one up because it'll make uh, shopping for thread a whole lot easier um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you is um, this is the new edition of the Love of Quilting magazine that is the um, July August edition and that's my quilt on the cover and we have this magazine um, available I've I've signed them so you can pick out an autographed copy of Love of Quilting but then this quilt here this is we have this as a kit this is the signed with love quilt kit and I brought one of the blocks out so you can see so the idea with this quilt is that it's a signature block so see how this center part here is um, plain fabric so it's a it's a chimney block uh, square and it goes together really simply and um, but this area here is made so that you could take it to um, a graduation party or a wedding reception or a baby shower or a family reunion and get people to sign inside here so what I did is I had I took it to the set of love of quilting and then I had the whole crew sign it so we had the makeup artist and the um, the, the producer and the director and um, the editor of the magazine like everybody signed it so it's my little keepsake um, from love of quilting so if you've got something coming up um, take a look we do have it as a kit as well and what I did is I went ahead and quilted it so it was already quilted and then I took it and they signed it already quilted so don't think that you have to sign it first and then take it to go be quilted you could quilt it and then they can sign it it'll be fine um, just hit it whatever fabric marker you use for them to sign just hit it with an iron afterwards it'll set it it'll all be fine and then I wanted to tell you guys about all of the amazing Christmas fabrics that are walking in the door, you guys. I wish you were here so I could show them to you personally. Um, one of my favorite fabric designers is Deb Strain. I just love her stuff. It's just sweet. It's just, oh, so sweet. Um, and so we've got all the holidays at home that just walked in the door from Deb Strain, including, um, and it's so pretty, like the color palette on Deb Strain stuff, but I absolutely adore the chickadees, her main focal print 
or the chickadee um, fabrics um, with some greenery. It's just adorable. But we also have her panels in both the black and the white, uh, snowy white uh, panel. And so it has a beautiful um, cardinal and some chickadees in a wreath in the center. And then it has some blocks around the outside. So it's here's, uh, there's no place like home and all roads lead home. I just love all of the little sentiments that Deb builds into her fabric. So we've got it in both the black and the white. And then we do have the Christmas Eve um, line that just came in. This is a Moda line. And again, luscious stuff. The, um, the focal print on this is the Bloom. And we've got it in both the Dove and the Cranberry. And it's just, and then the accompanying red fabrics to this line are just gorgeous. Um, so if you're looking for some Christmas fabric, um, I think you'd really love those. And then that um, three yard bundle that I showed you earlier, the Cheer and Merriment, we also have some other fabrics from that line. And so if you're looking to just buy the yardage from that, we do have um, the Cheer and Merriment um, line as well. And then we have one other um, Deb Strain panel and that's the Home Sweet Holidays. And that has, um, it has a, a little barn with again, the Cardinal and the Chickadee. And then I love the little red truck, Home for the Holidays. Um, so if you're looking for some kind of Christmas Christmas cheer in the middle of July, um, any of those fabrics will uh, will be good ones to have. Um, and I would ask you to take a little time, if you found anything that, that we have talked about here on the Quilted Joy Clubhouse helpful to you, um, it would be wonderful if you could just take a little time and review us over on Google. You'll find a link in the description and that just helps the, the Google algorithm monster kind of find us and serve us up to other people. We're a tiny little quilt shop here in Louisville, Kentucky. So it really does help us grow. It helps us um, get exposed to people who are like-minded, who are interested in learning about quilting and kind of wallowing in the joy of quilting. And you really do help us to grow when you leave a review. So I thank you for that. Okay, so each month I put out a call for um, folks to submit a quilt top. And then I show how I would quilt it if it were my quilt top. Well, as I said, last month we did a sit and sew where we looked at um, a celestial spin quilt and I have that pattern for you free. Go down to the description and there's a link that'll take you where you can download this pattern. Now we also have this kitted up for you. We have this, pat, this um, quilt kitted up for you. It's the Celestial Spin Quilt um, and it's really beautiful. It's got some gorgeous, um, it's got a black background fabric and then it's got um, some uh, Celestial Spin, Celestial fabrics uh, to make it up. So it, the Celestial fabrics are made from sun and moon and stars um, in a, and some bright colors and then mixed in with some uh, fun. This is a color wall, a Riley Blake color wall um, that's mixed in with. And so I decided since I showed you how to piece that in our June sit and sew, um, this month I would show you how to quilt it. So um, uh, this month I'm just going to draw out how I would quilt it and kind of break down how I would quilt it if it were my quilt. Um, okay, so I've got it in here um, on my computer and I'm just going to walk you through kind of my thought process on this quilt. And so what really popped out at me when I was looking at this and thinking about it was this negative space and how this kind of dark fabric, and I'm just going to um, zoom in here, how this dark fabric kind of makes a little um, really interesting, let's see if I can kind of like see this right here, this piece right here, it's like a blossom almost. Do you see how that negative space there creates, and it's all over the place, it's here too how it creates that blossom. And I thought that's the first thing that drew me was how can I accent that? I mean, the blocks are cool too, but I really want to like, how can I accent this negative space here? So what I thought about doing, and hopefully I'm zoomed in enough, Rachel, that you can see it well. Um, so I've got this yellow block here. And again, all of this is in a kit. So if you're looking to do it just like I did it, we've got it all kitted up for you with these fabrics and these colors. Um, but what I wanted to do was with this little yellow cornerstone here is kind of come up and create like a little blossom, a little petal. So again, this is how I would quilt it. And so it's got like a little, it's just, and notice that I'm not making them, I'm not making them all the same, right? I'm not a computer. There is, there is beauty in the small hand differences of each petal and God makes each petal different. So um, it's not like every single one is exactly the same. They have some variation too. 
All right, once I hit back into this cornerstone, back into this um, center block, then I'm just going to do a lowercase l and a lowercase l and a lowercase l and a lowercase l, a cursive letter l, just to fill out those petals. And then once I reach back to where I started, I'm going to do a little curl in, and that is my flower. And so um, let me zoom out here. And I'm just going to move all this over because I want you to see what this looks like after I do it in all these. Because you got to remember, some of these, like up in here, this is only a quarter of a, of a flower. This area here will get me a half of a flower. So let's take a look at what all of that is going to look like. So there are my flowers in the Celestial Spin quilt. Isn't it pretty? I just love it like that, right? Um, now, color-wise, I'm kind of thinking I want to use lime green because, man, there aren't many times in life where lime green thread works, and lime green thread would totally work in here, so I might actually use lime green. If that makes you nervous, you could always use like a silver or, um, you know, the, the Glide Thread of the Month bundle that we have, that color that was that, um, Oh, it was that stone color that might be interesting here, but I really love this lime green color. I think lime green there would be amazing. All right, so now let's look at these blocks. How in the world would we um, would we draw, would we quilt these blocks? So I'm gonna zoom in so I can get to just one of these blocks. So here's, actually I'm gonna come over. I'll pick this green and orange one. All right, so I'm gonna do this block here and I'm gonna change my color since I'm on that green. Let's go to a, like a blue color and I'm gonna draw here. And so there's a spin to it, right? We're making something that has a lot of movement. This block has a lot of movement. So I thought, okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curl in and curl in and that will fill that blade, that propeller blade. And then for this one, I'm going to go way out and curl all the way in. I'm really going to tuck my tail in. And the reason I want to go all the way in and tuck my tail in is that when I come out, I'm going to cross over myself, and that will create this kind of twisted ribbon. And then once I reach the um, back side of that curl, I'm just going to come out into that space and then head back down to where I started. All right, now we're at another blade, so I'm going to curl and curl and then head back down and big curl, tuck my tail way in, cross over, come to the back side, curl out, and then head back to the beginning. Curl, curl, and then curl way out, tuck my tail way in, cross over, and then come out. I know I went over into the orange there. That was just my big fat finger on my pin here. Um, okay, curl. So if that was real life, I would pick that out probably. And curl. All right, and then this next blade. So a big curl in, tuck my tail way in, cross over, come back to the top of the back of that curl, and then head all the way back. So that is how I would add some spin and dimension to the block. So let's take a look. If I do that on all the blocks, I'm just going to zoom out. So there we go, that's the Celestial Spin. Again, if you want this pattern for free, go down there in the description and I've got a link there and go grab it. Um, if you wanna make it with these fabrics, we got the kit for you, but that's how I would quilt it. Now, the last thing I've got is that border design. So what do I wanna do on the border design? And I really want to echo, anytime you're, you're talking about a border, I'm going to think about like, what did I do in the center of the quilt that I could echo on the outside of the quilt? So I'm just going to zoom in here um and go to that that border and i think what i want to do is i'm going to do a curl here so i'm going to curl and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to curl this way so one of the curls is going to go um let me see so one of the curls i'm trying to think how i'm going to teach you this so one of the curls is going to go this way and then one of the curls is going to go that way and then one of the curls is going to go this way. So I'm, I'm changing it up. So one side goes to the top, and then one side goes, one side goes north and one side goes south. One side goes north and one side goes south. One side goes north and one side goes south. And I would continue that on through the whole quilt all the way around 
that whole outside edge, the whole yellow, and then the last little piece here is that black and white outer border, which I love. It's all black and white, sun, moon, and stars on the celestial spin quilt. And I would, there's not a lot of quilting that you're gonna do there that will ever show in that outside black border. So I would just do this whole, what I did in that yellow, that curl to the north, curl to the south. I would do that in that black and white as well. Just know that that hard work is not gonna show. So you might do that first. So you get to know that curl, that swirl, and then do the yellow. Um, because that black and white print will be super forgiving. There's not a lot that's gonna show in there. And then as far as the thread color in that yellow inner border, I would probably choose a nice um, a nice shiny goldy color that's gonna blend well in there. I don't think I would go with a lot of contrast. I showed you like a dark blue on that yellow only so that you could see it well. Um, but as far as the color of thread in those um, blocks where they're all different colors, again, I think I might stick with like a either a gold, and that way the gold here in the outer border, um, in that yellow border, would kind of call back to what's going on in the center of the quilt. Um, or you might do that same lime green, but I'm loving the lime green. You could do gold in, in those inner flowers too. But anyway, um, I if you make the Celestial Spin quilt, or if you make a spin quilt with other um, fabrics, just let me know, like, like go over to the clubhouse and post it. I would absolutely love to see what you are working on. I am inherently nosy, and I love to see what everybody's got going on. Um, and so you can actually go over there um, to the website to the uh, Facebook page and you can see what other people are working on um, this month and kind of cheer for them and we're always excited to see a finish and uh, kind of cheer you on. So some folks have posted recently in our uh, clubhouse and I wanted to kind of do a little show and tell and show you what they have been working on so you can celebrate with them. Um, this one is what Catherine posted. Um, this is a, a carpenter star. She said she finished this yesterday. The backing fabric and the background fabric, um, uh, she used glide threads. A couple of um, the purple fabrics um, were thrown in there. And then uh, she also used a ruler uh, that she got from us here at Quilted Joy. And you can see um, where she used that ruler and those um, diamond shapes from the star. And it's not that beautiful. I, and I love the colors and how you chose to distribute those colors, Catherine. Just gorgeous. Thanks for posting that. Ben, 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 you blew me away, Ben. Isn't this beautiful? So Ben says that he's been quilting for years, but just on an old tabletop machine. And he finally bought a long arm six months ago. He says he's still learning. Ben, you're doing great. Um, and here's his first custom quilt. It's the first he's ever made for himself. You guys, Ben, you get the gold star. Like for your first custom quilt, and this is what you do, so impressed. Good job, Ben. All right, Christine, you may remember I showed how to quilt Christine's quilt in a previous episode of the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse. I can't remember if that was May or June, but it was recent. And I showed how I would quilt it, and then Christine put her own twist on it, and don't you love this uh, toucan quilt? I absolutely adore it. She says, thank you, Angela, for the ideas. She's still struggling a bit with ruler work on her domestic sewing machine, but she's getting better. Practice, 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 practice. I love it, Christine. Love it, love it, love it. Barbara posted this one. Barbara said um, she had, uh, she it was a wedding gift for a cousin's daughter and it, she ended up doing an edge to edge. It was mailed off to Florida and she's very happy with how it turned out. And you know, Barbara, sometimes when you get a quilt like this, it's very geometric, it's very symmetrical, it's very structured, that kind of swirly quilting that you put on it, put on it really does bring it to life. I like the choice that you made with your edge to edge. Nice job, Barbara. And Debbie, Debbie said that she quilted this one for a customer and I can see that you put some uh, over there in those diamonds on the side. You did some of our uh, wishbones and then take a look at how she kind of had those uh, I don't know what those are Debbie I'm guessing they're like the, to me they kind of look like stalagmites and you just kind of put very straight lines in those um, to kind of accentuate those great job Debbie and then um, this was another one from Debbie with cats love it with little hearts there and all those cave fabrics isn't that gorgeous um, and then she put a minky back on it or a, or a cuddle back and I always love how when you quilt with cuddle it just looks like you've like carved into it 
Um, nice job, Debbie. And then Karen, Karen, I love this. Um, so Karen says that this was from a Fabric Cafe three yard quilt book. Um, and I wanna say, Karen, I think this is in the patriotic, um, the patriotic three yard quilt book. She says she made this for her granddaughter and she picked the fabrics from her mom's stash, used the pattern from, oh, it's from Make It Modern. It's from the Fabric Cafe's Make It Modern book. Um, and you can find that over at Quilted Joy as well um, with three yard bundles. So she says she's still really new with her long arm, but she's learning. And ruler work seems to be what she's enjoying the most. You're doing a great job, Karen. I really like how you're accentuating those stars with some outline quilting and then putting that little uh, firework there in the middle. Um, very nice job. She said that um, it's got 24 blocks and they're all uh, the same block. All right, so Tina, Tina posted this one. She says, well, I finally got this baby done. The blocks were done by um, my fellow quilters and their instructions for their individual blocks were only to put their personality into them or of something they enjoyed doing. So her job was the assembly and to fill in the spaces with blocks um, of her own construction. This was started way back in 2013 when she was president of the group but the final assembly was in the last few years. And don't you love that each of these blocks is a separate individual that's close to Tina and then she chose how she was gonna quilt each block based on their personality. How special, Tina. Thank you so much for posting that, I love it. Um, all right, this one is Melissa. And Melissa says this is her latest um, patchwork scrappy quilt. Look at all of those batiks that she pulled into that quilt, just beautiful. And of course, loads of places to play. And she put um, some feathers there in the border and then some uh, fe uh, outside border as well, all feathers, just gorgeous. Melissa, thanks for posting that. And Lori, so Lori, she says this was recently custom quilted for um, her friend Mary, who told her that she'd been working on this quilt for four years and it was made for her grandson, who's an Ole Miss fam, fan, as is the rest of the family. She used um, Wonder Fill Deco Bob thread in red and blue and gray that she got from here at Quilted Joy. And she used her sit down Juki to do it. And she says that Mary was so excited to receive that completed quilt yesterday. Um, she says that she's an Arkansas native and a Razorback fan, um, and but that uh, Mary, her friend Mary, was happy to explain what a hottie toddy was. All right, and I have to confess, I don't know what a hot, well, what, when I think of a hottie toddy, I think of uh, like a whiskey drink. So I don't know how that um, goes to uh, Old Miss uh, football specifically. Um, so put it down there in the comments if you know how all this relates, because I am a little clueless. I don't know how it all relates. So those were just some of the quilts that were posted there in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse over on Facebook. And I hope that you join us over on Facebook. Um, we have our Facebook page that you can find out what's going on in at Quilted Joy, but then in our Facebook group there, um, and the Quilted Joy Clubhouse on Facebook is where you can post photos so we can see what you're working on and cheer you on. All right, I um, look forward to our next meeting, which will be on Wednesday, August the 2nd at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, and it's going to be a throwback clubhouse. We're going to talk about um, how to quilt uh, one of those three yards, a different block from one of those three yard quilt books. Um, and I think you'll learn a lot, um, but we've got some other things planned for you as well. Join us over on Instagram and you'll find um, all sorts of fun things going on. And then, of course, on our YouTube channel, you're going to find that sit and sew that I told you about before that shows you how to piece the Celestial Spin quilt, as well as all of our other recordings of the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse for the last few years. So I thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful um, July. And just know we won't meet that third Wednesday in July because I am going to be um, sitting on a beach somewhere with a Mai Tai. So I hope Hope you guys have a wonderful July and I will see you in August. All right, bye guys.